One of the uh, uh, members of the club, I was talking to him a few days later on the phone, and actually it really drilled it home to me, and he said, your son dying has saved this boy's life. I'm Barry, Barry Wilkinson, Daniel's father, and Jill, D Dan's mum. We're trustees of the Daniel Wilkinson Foundation. Um, Dan died September 16th from an undiagnosed heart condition. He collapsed playing football. Um, we, at the time, obviously it was quite traumatic, but non-league football and people in general were absolutely superb, wanting to help do things and raise money. And there was a substantial amount of money raised uh, through Shaw Lane, where uh, bands are where Dan was playing his football. And we really were left with a choice of do we donate on block what's been raised to Cry, Cardiac Risk and the Young, or do we set up to up our own charity? Um, and uh, we decided to do the, our own charity route, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Because that way uh, uh, we wanted to be able to hand defibs out to grassroots sports teams. Uh, we were very aware that you know, a lot of teams, a lot of clubs don't, don't have the facilities um, and because Dan had passed away on the pitch playing football, uh, you know, we just saw it as vital that, that teams, clubs, um, anywhere really, but we, we, we chose to stick with uh, grass grassroots sports, primarily um, that they, they they really needed um, needed a defib, uh, and then the other side of it is we could control a little bit of uh, screening, doing heart screenings as well, um, which is is what we do. We tend to do three a year, um, and we actually thought that our first life would be saved through screening. Uh, but as it happens, the, we handed a defib out to a club in March 18. In November 18, one Sunday evening, I got a text uh, to say that a 14-year-old boy called Daniel as well, playing football that morning, had collapsed, gone into cardiac arrest, and they'd used the defib that we'd supplied them, and it saved his life. It, it was it was um, out if you like for fourteen minutes. The defibrillator shot him three times, and he was just coming round as the paramedics turned up. Um, and there's no lasting issues with you know no. like brain function or anything. No. Um, it's, it's completely um, normal, other than obviously he has a, yeah. a heart issue that they didn't know I, I, about. As in these cases, as a, you know, because of that, his family had to be screened. Um, Daniel was or is 14, he has a younger brother, 12, um, and they've detected a problem with him as well. I'm not sure whether it's the same problem, but again, yeah. so you potentially know, so that's, potentially, that's two lives. So. You know, he, he's now in the system to be, you know. The screening, um, the, the two we've done so far, uh, the first one out of it screened, oh, some, there, there was some no shows, so it screened about 95, I think. We, we ended up screening 95, and there were six, I think, referrals. They found problems with six out of the 95. The second one that we screened 99, um, and there was actually 11 referrals, although um, that was unusually high because we had a family came in. Um, whose uh, a sibling had passed away just a few weeks before in her sleep um, and they wanted to be screened. Again, she so was only in her 20s. She but was 26. You realise how young, how, I suppose, common. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be. You oh, tend to think of issues as being in the elderly. But it's Have you found that that's like a misconception of people thinking that it's older yeah. on exactly. yeah. 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 And, 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 yeah, you know, because... Because of what we're doing now, we're, we're more aware of, uh, you know, th things sort of jump out and hit us, don't they? We, we, we hear things and it is amazing how many youngsters there are. 
we first time down on the Sunday evening before the Monday night and he was beaming, he was joking, he was laughing, he was as happy as anything. And yeah, he went out to play football on the Monday night. Mm. We were sitting at home. We hadn't gone because he was playing in a uh, brick house um, and we're from Hull. And uh, as we did, we looked at the, kept looking at the clock, oh, it'll be half time, oh, it'll be back on the pitch. And uh, 10 minutes into the second half, Barry's phone rang and Barry picked it up and it, it said, call from Dan and Barry said he must have been sent off and he never he was a real clean player so we thought well why would he be sent off well it wasn't Dan obviously it was one of the other footballers and they said Dan had gone down and we had to get there as soon as we could and you said didn't you how, mm -hmm. uh, how is he and uh, the words that haunt you mm -hmm. still um, this young footballer himself probably didn't know what to say and he just said they're working on him. When we go out and about and you know hand, hand in days out it's 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 difficult because there's no one big sort of a big red spot come on your head to say you've got a problem or anything like that you know but it's just trying to get into people's heads that you know some of the signs are very general but if that happened two or three times just you sort of can't stress enough can you the um, having these available, you know, on yeah. hand. <clears throat> yeah, because it's the the speed of of using one of these that that saves the life. Uh, you know, I mean, when we hand them out, we say a little bit. We we talk a little bit about yeah, Dan, and we yeah. we talk about the um, the defibs. We've we've got a trainer defib, and we set it going. And actually, that has been worth it. its weight in gold, doesn't yeah. it? Because yeah. when people see that working. Um, they really, you see them sit up to attention, don't you? Yeah, and they're, yeah. They, uh, they're amazed, and it? and it is trying to get through to people that, um, you know, you, you do not need formal training. We we get the same questions every time, don't we? Oh, what if I what if I hurt somebody? And 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 you know, getting through to them. Look, if if you don't use it, this person's going to die. You know. Some people seem to think you're still bringing a big suitcase along, type of thing, you know, uh, and the, the portable, the the, the way, the, just the just the whole package. Yeah. How convenient! Well, what what I didn't realize because the lifeline was the only one I'd come across because that's what we had at work, and it's only since we've been handing them out, uh, you, you come across and, and taking note of them in other places and things, it, you see how many different ones there are, and and. Um, we always say to people, you want the easiest thing in a traumatic situation, which it is when somebody goes down, to get somebody to use it. Um, it's got to be simple because people don't want to start pressing buttons, doing, touching, lifting lids, putting, doing this. They've got to do as least the least possible. Um, take it out of their hands, if you like, because they don't want the responsibility. What would your message be to like any clubs or workplaces or public areas that hasn't got a defib, that's him and hand about it or maybe thinks, oh, I don't need one? They do need one. <laughs> get, get one. And, uh, yeah, it, yeah <coughs> and as ever, you know, it's it's funding them, you know, um, but I would make it a priority, yeah. Um, yeah. without a doubt. We, we, we understand, you know, that there is a cost you know to, to it and um and, and there's ongoing costs and this is what we explain to the clubs where where we've been but you know we say something like the pads are two years after five years you know in the scheme of things it, it's nothing you but get you sorted put, and you fundraise and you, you you know you put a bit by it you put that whatever. cost onto saving a life <clears throat> yeah it's nothing it's nothing